All right. Hello and welcome to week two of the Hustry Esports Draft League season two. This is Cygnus here with my co-commentators and league staff members. Hello. Uh, this is Daniel 1018. And this is uh, Call me Daniel, uh, <laughs> uh, Scrumptious or Armando. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> we got our next week of matches. Week two was done and over and we have some very interesting ones to get through. Some sweeps, but most of them were all yeah. pretty back and forth for the most part. Uh, uh, another very exciting week here. And to start off, we have a match between two of us, actually. It's my team, the Magic Carp Mayhem, against Daniel's team, the Judgment Day. And looking at this here, we're seeing Daniel bringing Masquerade, Gauss Articuno, Galarian Articuno, Annihilate, Hisui and Quillfish, and Flygon. And up against that, I'm running Latias, Darkrai, Galarian, Sloking, Reververoom, Ditto, and Ogre Pond Wellspring. Armando, as the neutral observer here, what are your thoughts on seeing that, seeing these? Okay, seeing this, and obviously I talked with uh, Danny with this, that there's not a lot of hazard removal yeah. on Danny's side, and Coolfish is a problem. Because uh, obviously it's, it can set up Toxic Spice and you can remove it with like Sloking and stuff, but if those hazards stay up, or like... Uh, I might have seen a sticky web on a funny little uh, masquerine. Uh, it can be quite an issue. And then, just like from type-wise, I mean, I feel like this both teams are relatively even in terms of like coverage and stuff. But uh, we'll see once we get into the match. Yeah, coming into this, I was kind of knowing that Denny's team does not have access to a lot of hazard removal, so I kind of took advantage of that with my team building. Yeah, for me, I would just pretty much look at what I felt you were most likely t to, to bring and just focus it in on bringing the most effective counters possible. Uh, I w was viewing like 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 Darkrai for Annihilate, for example, Latias for Flygon. I was just trying to look at threats. Uh, I, I was looking at the threats like that. I felt Ogre Pond would... Was probably going to be one of my stronger matchups into you, and this has definitely felt this heading into it. I definitely felt like this was a good Ditto matchup. Yeah, there is never really a bad Ditto matchup. It's just <laughs> true. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's get into it. See the masquerade from Daniel's side, and Happy New Year, yeah, from uh, he's so Woo! Cute. we do see the sticky webs come out, the taunt. No more uh, quiver dancing. Yeah, I just want there because I, I saw a week one. I was expecting, I was expecting in quiver dance, and I wanted to nip that in the bud. Mm -hmm. Crunch, ooh, a lot of health. Do we see a switch? We don't see a switch. We see another taunt. Yeah. Trying to stop any more further spikes. Quillfish. Quillfish did a lot more damage than I was expecting. I was not expecting that thing to be outfitted for, for damage. I thought it was going to be more of a support and hazards role. Mm hmm. Admittedly, it was kind of both. Yeah. Ooh, Full the setup. The EVLA is just naturally very bulky. Ooh, does not pick up the KO, so it's though. It's kind of mixed between attacking and bulk. Ooh, Flygon. I would expect a switch out. No, he's just committing for the Iron Head. Oh, yeah, Earthquake takes the KO there. You probably could have switched into Latias with Levitate. Yeah, if that Iron Head flinch, that could have been pretty bad for me. But... Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was hoping for. I, I saw that. I was kind of scared for like any switch in there because I could have gone Latias, but if you went with a Dragon move, I would have been in trouble. So I, so I was just hoping for the flinch. Ooh. Yeah. Sometimes you can't really hope for those like ten percent uh, chances. There, I think thirty percent in Iron Head's case. Toaster. Coming out. We see. Trying to scope My out the set. Is so sus. No, 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 no. He was doing tasks. I promise you. See the U-turn coming out. <laughs> Ash Kisser sounds a lot like something else. Uh, Fire Punch takes a while, but gets a crit though. When we see the wall yeah, coming really back, there on getting crit, rid of the, the toxic spikes. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It does nothing. Quillfish is just that guy. Quillfish is him. 
Yeah, and Ditto's like the one member of this. Uh, the, and Ditto's like the member of our team here who just does not care ab ab about the sticky web at all. But, I am yeah, surprised I realized... you didn't set up hazards yeah, I... while Quickfish was up. I'm honestly surprised you didn't set up hazards while Masquerade was. Uh, mm. While you were. Was Ditto? Masquerade, yeah. Yeah, could it even the speed a yeah, little bit? Yeah, I guess bit? I just didn't really think of it. <laughs> Joe left turn 15. Oh my goodness. He had his own battle to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even notice Joe was watching. <laughs> <laughs> He's always watching. Anyways. <laughs> the poison quillfish. <laughs> yeah, Barbara is still doing nothing though with that. With yeah, natural and we were experiencing that in both directions. <laughs> yeah, and Latias gets the gets the KO on Damascarine, finally getting me on the board. But, but yeah, also I noticed you you were pivoting a lot, and you just be able to get rid of the toxic spikes, which I think is one of the reasons why I didn't go for that with Ditto. Mm. The unnecessary crit. I think I've. <laughs> Yeah, Lalia started putting in some good work there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, uh, I was expecting Protean instead uh, of uh, Overgrown, uh, Overgrown Mascarada. That's why I did just go for Ice Beam with Latias there. Yeah, I believe this set was uh, Focus Dash, no? Or Detoxed Rose 2? Yes, that's yeah. Mascarada's Focus Dash. Yeah, focus yeah, dash overgrow also, flower trick. So, Ooh, nasty. Yeah. I didn't even end up it, being Dark the focus so dash now. Darkrai came so close there, but <laughs> just wasn't meant to be. Unfortunately. Be, unfortunate. Yeah, pretty much I mean I was already on the back foot, but once Ditto lost once the knockoff Ditto lost the speed tie, I was just done. Yeah, yeah. knockoff into Ditto is kind of kind of rip, because then you're always speed tying. Yeah. Yeah, it's just another time where hazards are still another crutch here. You kind of are forced to bring him yeah, on top every week now, unless you the the person you're facing just doesn't have yeah, a lot of hazards. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Damn it, Ladios! Well, why couldn't you have default? What I was upset about was that uh, Articuno and Annihilate were brought to another game but didn't <laughs> see any combat. Which they were annoying. they were cheering on like they were cheering on Masquerade or with uh, some popcorn you know they were in the back they were cheering. Yeah, yeah. I, I still disappointed. Uh... I still disappointed. Darkrai didn't really get to do much in either of my matches so far. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I had a I had a fun set with Annihilate that honestly probably could have worked if if I switched in the right way, but unfortunately it. It wasn't meant to be. I'm guessing you're, you're not going to reveal that to us. You're going to keep it in the the down low for right now. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, although I'm guessing, I'm, 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 I'm guessing, with me having Darkrai, were you running Vital Spirit? Yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah, like two of your mons had Vital Spirit. I forgot what the other one was. Yeah, yeah. I remember noticing that in team building, and that's why I chose not to bring Hypnosis on Darkrai at all. Ah, <laughs> but. Okay. But Darkrai ended up just not really being a factor in there, <laughs> mm. which makes me sad. Anyway, Armando, now we're going to your match against... Now we're going to your match up against Joe. And Joe's Drunken Dracovish are bringing... is bringing Scyther, Primarina, Deoxys Defense, J Jolteon, Gouging, Fu Gouging Fire, and the King of ZU, Shaman. And then... Mm -hmm. Armando countered here with Whiskash, Heatran, Salamence, Ursaring, Cleavor, and Galarian Weezing. And I gotta say, I really like Heatran here. <laughs> yeah, Heatran That's kinda funny. walls like a good chunk of this team. Yeah, as we were talking about during team prep, Heatran is really good into this. <laughs> you know, Denny, that's really funny you say that about Heatran. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I mean, we were in voice chat during team prep. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's funny you say that about Heatran because of what happens in the match. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that could mean one of two things, really. <laughs> but you'll see. Um, I'm not sure which direction that's going to yeah, be going in. This Shaman was low-key very problematic for me because this thing got, like, Earth Power, 
uh, Seed Flare lowers Ooh. my special defense. Like, this Shaman was unironically the thing that I was scared most of next to, like, I guess, Gouging Fire and Jolteon. The rest of it just, like, are just, like, there are walls that I need to break, like Deoxys. So those obviously the biggest one. EV Light Scyther is a problem sometimes, but I have Cleavor, so. Yeah. I just realized, yeah, Scyther versus yeah, Cleavor. That I also really like Jolteon as a Terra Captain. I mean, I figure Terra Ice is probably a given here. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this team preview stage, Daniel? I think that both of these teams are kind of scary in their own right. It feels like Joe here is going with a little more bulk, though, with Gowden, Fire, Primarina, and Deoxys. While I feel like... Armando is going a more balanced approach with Whisk Cash, yeah. Keytran, Galarian, Weezing, kind of offering that defensive side as well as a possible Eviolite Ursaring with then Salamence, Cleavor, yeah. playing up Rock, and also Keytran as well, opposing both the defensive and offensive threat. Yeah, definitely notice both teams having just a lot of takiness here between what you're putting out on Armando's team, but also that Deoxys defense and the gouging fire for, for, from Joe. Joe as well. This seems to be just a battle of the tanks. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Let's see which tanks win out, though. Yep. Deoxys, oh my goodness. Deoxys defense and against, up against Whiskash. Interesting lead. Whiskash figures a solid lead for hazards as we see those stealth rocks come out. The Axis goes right away to teleporting into Shaman, which immediately takes a bit of Stealth Rocks damage there. And then Galarian Weezing is coming out for Armando to take that Seed Flare. Yeah, I, I thought about Weezing going into Heatran, well. but I couldn't risk Earth Power. Reed. Mm -hmm. And Primarina now switches out. Joe's not being afraid to switch even with those Stealth Rocks up. But now he has Toxic Spikes in addition to that. And Whiskey makes his return. Eating up a psychic noise. Peep this uh, yeah, wish cast tech though. The tech, the tech. Spark wish cash. Oh yeah. And it got a crit though, Ooh, which is kind of crazy. Oh. It is. It's a crit. Takes out a nice sixty-five percent of Scyther's health there. And he goes down. What a sol but what a soldier. I don't. It doesn't be from dual wing V. It's just a uh, phys that move. physical electric type move. Sixty-five base power helps me hit Primarina, and also conveniently Scyther. Yeah. And Scyther gets off a of defog, getting rid of all the hazards that Wishcast set off. And with it off the field, they can't be reset again. But Yoshi the Salamence does set up a Dragon Dance, crucially. But he did take a... a really... Yeah. Really Dragon scary dances. for Joe here. Yeah, I really wanted to make sure yeah, I Scyther... outspeed Jilty. Scyther was able to get a good amount of damage, but... Joe's kind of hard-pressed against the Salamence. And yeah, Earthquake's oh, really not a contact move. There. Yeah. Yeah, Earthquake not a contact move was crucial there in avoiding that burn. As the as the Moxie boost comes off too, and this Salamence is looking ready to snowball. I'm so surprised this thing lived. I'm at like plus three. It's insane. The Oxus yeah. defense is hyper bulky. I would understand that. Right? Yeah, even against a uh, times three attack Salamence, it was able to eat eat, eat a Dragon Claw. But it can't eat another one, especially with that pointless crit. But Life Orb deals his damage and Salamence is gone. Now it's dug against Shaman once again. Armando is so scared about. This thing does number. I think I'd levitate on my Weezing just to make sure I didn't get Earth Powered. And then I got yeah. the special yeah, defense drop. Oh my goodness. It didn't announce mm. neutralizing gas, so. Yeah, and there's no Misty Terrain either. So it's got to be Levitate, yeah. But that also means Joe knows it's Levitate. If he and has the, uh, appropriate game knowledge, which I would expect him to. Yeah, and the critical hit of Seed Flare there takes Weezing out as Cleavor now comes Ooh. and barely manages to live that Seed Flare. I did not think that Shaman was going to be faster. There. Wow. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. That almost cost me my game. Because it was running choice Jolteon scarf. Running but boots. so was I. Not even getting the Terra that as that X Scissor just dealt damage. It's a raw X Scissor doing the Oka, kind of crazy there. And all that's left is Primarina, who is poisoned as well. Yeah, Primarina is really on a timer here, so 
Yeah, yeah tell the timer just... and it's against Ursaring and Heatran. Yeah, so if Ursaring or Heatran can just get the quick kill, or just even stall each uh, Primarina out. Yeah, but yeah, Shadow Claw will it. do it. That's yeah. game. Heatran not even showing up. <laughs> Heatran did He's so, so lazy. good into this team. He was just showing up. He was just munching on his popcorn and snacks. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I guess just the threat of Heatran being sent out meant that Primarina couldn't stay on the field for that long as well, limiting its presence. Yeah, uh, as well, just that Scarf Shaman factor. almost cost me the game. Uh, if Cleavor didn't live that, I was in a very tough position. Uh, and then it's funny, yeah. because because it was Scarfed, uh, Joe didn't notice that my Cleavor was also Scarfed, so that's why he threw Jolteon on it, not knowing. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm just faster because I'm scarfed, and then he didn't, he didn't notice I was scarfed too. But yeah. What item was your heat trend running, by the way? Uh, I don't remember. I was it Shookaberry? It was. I think it was just leftovers. I'd substitute just in case it was trying to barrel me, just so I can scope it out. I think it was just okay, leftovers. Okay, yeah. Because I remember we discussed like possibly Shookaberry. Yeah, I thought about it, but I decided it'd probably be better to, because I wasn't gonna Oko Shaman. With the, the, what's it called? The EVs I had. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, next, next up we have Hunter versus Marcus here. Very yeah, we're seeing... Team preview for both sides here. Definitely, we're seeing Marcus's rose-tinted lenses bringing Quavo, Terra Captain, Whimsicott, Landorus Incarnate, Volcarona, Low Kicks, and King Gambit. And against that, Hunter's Wayward Revile's coming in with with Lycanroc, Weavile, Great Tusk, Gligar, Terra Captain, Raging Bolt, and Tentacruel. What jumps out seeing this matchup? Um, I'd say that Raging Bolt might not have, like, the best matchup here with Landorus being there, uh, yeah, King Whimsicott Gambit with the fairy, Whimsicott. yeah, resisting, resisting yeah. Raging Bolt. I feel like it the best matchup that it has is Quaquable here, yeah, and that's why I kind of think even if it's not the best matchup into the rest of the team, I think Hunter kind of had, had to bring Raging Bolt because otherwise, a lot of Hunter's team. It, does not like facing Quaquavo. Looking at this. Yeah, Quaquavo can very much snowball if you let it get out of hand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Lycanroc, Weavile, Great Tusk, and Gligar all face a weakness from one of Quaquavo's typings. Well, provided Gligar doesn't Terra into a potential water type. True, yeah. We, we have seen water Terra on this Gligar in the past. You also see Tentacruel there too, probably also there to block out Quaquavo. Yeah. Yeah. And Tentacruel honestly matches up pretty well into things other than, like, just, like... Yeah, I mean, really, the only things it, it doesn't necessarily are, like, Whimsicott, which is more support anyway, and King Gambit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but even Whimsicott, it's got poison types that are quad, quad strong against uh, Whimsicott. Yeah. But yeah, I can't really do much against King Gambit. Yeah, apart from that, though, I think... Tentacruel has like a decent matchup against most of Hunter's uh, Marcus's team. Yeah, and the battle begins. Landorus against Gligar. Not not the Landorus you may be used to seeing, but this one is a big threat. Ooh, both both players just setting up rocks around one. Yeah, and Marcus showing no fear with those Ooh. rocks with Quaquavo. That critical hit Ice Fang just does nothing to it. Especially yeah. with that leftover heal, too. Yeah, unfortunately for Hunter, Marcus switched out away from Lando. Away from Lando. Yeah, but Hunter does have the Raging Bolt matchup against Quaquavo Qu now after Quaquavo was faster than Gligar with the, pi with the pivot. Mm, but later, it's right to just eat up the Volt switch. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty free hard switch there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All 
Orcus again wanting Coquavo all up against Gligar. Yeah, nice pivot from Hunter there. Going and back. we're back yeah, here again. It, yeah, see, both sides have Stealth Rocks, so they're both just just chipping each just chipping each other down with Stealth Rocks, going between the same two matchups. Ooh, rapid but spin. rapid spin from, from Marcus Aww. ends that, and it lives the Volt Switch. He was reading and the now read. has one and a half times speed. But what can it really do against this Tentacruel? Ooh, Roost. Is, is this a good heal? Crazy. Yeah, and now. Both sides self rocks are gone here. Both at a one and a half times speed. And Tentacruel oh, actually crazy. goes first. Wow. So and fast Tentacruel. turns back into the Raging Bolt again. Raging Bolt eat eating up that, that, that Aqua stuff, yeah. Yeah, although Kukwavil is now at two times speed. Oh, but the Thunderclap. But Thunderclap is priority. Goodbye, Kukwavil, the first KO of the game. Now it's Whimsicott coming out to face the beast. Moonblast, I'm guessing? Oh, Encore. Oh. oh try... Was he trying to, to, like, trap him into Thunderclap or something? When he yeah. Terra Steals to get rid of the, uh... He was gonna outstall it with Leech Seed. Of, uh, yeah, but Terra Steal Whimsicott is positioned very well against, uh, against Tentacruel, especially with that Leech Seed up. Yeah, I like that plan, though. Encore and Thunderclap, I mean, probably just Leech Seed stalling. Yeah. yeah, Tentacruel flip turning out. I'm noticing that to be a bit of a pattern here. Uh, and could Lycanroc draw? Rocky the Lycanroc is in. Oh, right. I forgot. Lycanroc is also a Terra captain with Fighting Terra. Oh, close combat. I didn't even know it got that move. I thought it was yeah. a draw run. But, but Whimsicott is running Protect here. Back into Tentacruel here. Ooh. Yep. Very well the read. Switch. Very well read on the switch by. But by Hunter, I gotta say. Yeah, so many pivots this game, it's crazy. Yeah. Both oh. players just full on Ooh, matchup Rocks hunting. Are, Rockstar back up. And he gets the quiver dance. Yeah, that's not the best time for Rocks, but... but... <gasps> the flame body! Dual oh, does a lot. Flame body. That's too bad. Yeah, that Gligar's not gonna be doing much damage the rest of the match. Oh, well, Especially now that the dance anymore. goes off, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this Phil Corona set up very well. Ooh, nice switch. I like that. But he switches out, losing his boost to send Landorus back out. And that's probably why the Acceleroc was definitely a threat. Yeah, but I think Quavo was the only rapid spinner oh, on this team. Oh, there Raging Bolt there. So Volcarona's yeah. essentially dead. Yeah. Yeah, Weavile's threatening Landorus here too, especially now that it's Sword Stance. If it could live here... Which it will, because Mark set up rocks again. Ooh, the first hit of Triple Axel and feeling up to get rid of Lando. Dealing 41% on the first hit. Ooh, yeah. first impression, first impression. Ooh. Oh, but it's got Sash. We are seeing it, but we got the Sash. And with the sword Dance, this Weavile will, will do damage. Ooh, yeah. But King, it with Sucker Punch, King Gambit is out with... King Gambit really oh. threatening there. With three fallen teammates, Ooh, now it's Great Tusk. Volks is back in its heavy duty boots, but the rapid spin from Tusk and gets rid of the rocks and takes out Volk. No, no burn here. Yeah, yeah that Steel Terror Rumsicott's back Marcus out. Is that he's, uh, weak to ground now, but with but Great to Tusk. Rapid spin. He can kind of set up how he wants to. Yeah, but if can Tusk is a fighting seed? type move. Leech seed? Yeah. Yeah. We are seeing seed. Seeds are back on Tentacruel. Cool once again. And yeah, I was going to say, Hunter would want to switch there. The double Leech Seed, though? Oh my goodness. Oh. The Prankster. Oh, oh, dark type is immune to Prankster. That, that low kick so not doing much to, to Winsicott. I respect it, Yeah, Marcus. very curious so choice of low kick there. Yeah, that might have just been his only move that could have hit. Oh, close combat, though. I guess, or that would have dealt big damage, or that could have been super effective, at least. Yeah. But now it's just King Gambit with the full maximum boost from Supreme Overlord. Is that against Ooh, Great Tusk? Yeah, the Sucker punch. punch misses again on the switch in. 
And the close combat, and that's it, yeah. Yeah, that's enough to take it out. Supreme Overlord boosts are fearsome, but it doesn't boost your defense. And Hunter takes the 6-3 to three win here. From a very exciting match, I gotta say. Yeah. What's well, the card doing numbers Really well played from Hunter there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it was just fascinating just watching all the matchup hunting that was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a whole lot of pivots from both players there, just trying to get the matchups that they wanted to say. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, you were seeing a lot of that between between Raging Bolt, Gligar, Landorus, and Kukwavel on those first few turns. Yeah. Yeah, very well played from both. But uh, Whimsicott Terror type, unfortunately, cost him its life there. Uh yeah, I mean, I definitely like the terror type for being meshed up against Tentacruel, but unfortunately, the, just being weak to both fighting and ground type left it vulnerable to a to, left it vulnerable to a lot of other threats on Hunter's team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think the field power there was a bit too Whimsicott's detriment there. It it was making it steal made it inadvertently weak to. Well, I guess four due to Weavile's low kick, but four of Hunter's team members there being the Terra Fighting, mm -hmm. uh, Lycan Rock, the Great Tusk, and a Gligar with potentially Earthquake. But I think we saw all four of Gligar's moves, and it wasn't running Earthquake. Yeah, Stealth Rock, yeah. Ice that Fang, you turn into a Windy. Yeah, and Marcus was able to get Volcarona set up really well there, but, but but even with that, that Gligar's dual wind beat dealt just so much damage to it, just crippling it so much. And then and then there was Thunderclap. Yeah, yeah the pressure from Exile Rock too. Staying up was really the rocks as well. Mm -hmm. preventing yeah, switching uh, well, as much as he wanted to. Well, well at least Volcarona had boots on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Volcarona is kind of forced to run boots when you know your opponent can set up stealth rocks. I wonder how Volcarona yeah, wears which, boots. Especially against this team. Uh, the bottom two wings. Yeah, that uh, one. <laughs> but like, how does, it, how does it like hold on? Like, does it put like some tape on it, you know? Yeah. Never These underestimate the, the power of crazy glue. So true. <laughs> That's the, anyway. the I was really excited to see personally with Taboo yeah, versus M. To be honest, I mean, this could either be a really, really good match or a very stally one. <laughs> yeah. Look at these two teams. I mean, you have the Glamora Golden Go core along with Screamtail, Espathra, Grimmsnarl, and Manaphy coming out for the Agents of Shield on from Taboo. Then, on the other hand, you have M's Baneful Bayonets running Gliscor, Pikachu, Latios, Iron Treads, the other Paradox Don fan, and see, seeing time now, Iron Bundle, and Toxapex to round it out. Yeah, I feel like it would be a stally game if there wasn't like Espathra and Manaphy who are just going to be setting up and trying to break the stall. Yeah. But otherwise yeah. it would be a very slow game. Yeah, just with, like, Gli seeing Gliscor versus Glamora. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'd say Gliscor kind of wins that matchup pretty easily. Yeah, it yeah. does. <laughs> but yeah, I'm probably expecting... Uh, yeah, actually, Gliscor is uh, actually a pretty big threat threat for Arid. Yeah, I helped, I helped M team build this team, so I know what... A good chunk of M's Pokemon are oh, okay. to so gotcha. Yeah, I'll say that this is this is M's team is heavily counter counter teamed towards. It, yeah, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see what M's gonna do to to counter that as Pathra. As I experienced firsthand in week one, that thing is a beast. It's it sure it is. As someone who's used one in a former draft yeah. league, like I haven't said that enough. Yeah. Espathra, Espathra is a snowball machine. You let that yeah. thing go, and it will go. Does Bundle get Haze? 
I don't think it does. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking of possible answers. Or does Toxapex? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can see that being an answer. If Toxapex doesn't just die to it before, it can get it off. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's see how it goes. So starting off this battle, Grimmsnarl lead, not Glamora, against Iron Treads. Grimmsnarl immediately getting off the reflect, and we're gonna have to censor a bit of that chat there. No, don't mm -hmm. worry, it's not showing. I only have the showdown one. Uh, okay, showing. cool. Yeah, here, out comes Gliscor, but it does eat a parting shot as as Aaron switches into Manaphy. Ooh, Not like that, and pivots over to Iron Bundle, but that lets Manaphy set up a free Tail Glow. There is no but he, uh, but he he light screen. It out, probably out the of Encore of a yeah, freeze, freeze dry. dry. Yeah, Freeze Dry could just wreck that Manaphy. And U-Turn gets a lot of... Grimstall's taking break? up a lot of chip oh, damage already. Take out, take out. But wait, now Break Break? Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Which, a chip, that chip damage is eaten even more by that fake out from Pikachu. Pikachu gets Break Break this game, right? That's, that wasn't just, let's go Pikachu. Yeah! <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <He's done. laughs> there is! Bye-bye screens, but hello Toxic Spikes with Toxic Debris. And oh, Glamorna just puts the one shot onto Pikachu. Yeah, Not seeing a terror coming out there. And Iron Treads manages to tank a lot of that Earth Power. Counters with an Earthquake of its own. Down goes Glamora, but the second instance of Toxic debris, debris goes out. These spikes will be badly poisoning now if they're not gotten rid of. But Toxapex, oh. Oh, Boots. Is it Boots? Yeah. I guess so. Oh, the burn. That's oh, but the poor burn. I was expecting to switch into, to into Toxapex because I could get rid of the, of the spikes. Yeah, it makes sense though. If this thing has boots, it applies one more pressure than toxic pass. Another failed encore from from Bundle. Very interesting seeing Iron Bundle playing around nah, Encore a lot in U turn. Oh, we don't, never mind. Oh, well, this one's poisoned already, so it doesn't matter. No. Oh, the double! The double brick break! break. Also has brick break! Getting rid of the screens and taking down Grimmsnarl! Manaphy oh comes back goodness. out, and it is interesting to note that Screen Tail can also set up screens as a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> Manaphy is not safe in this neighborhood. No, it, <laughs> no, it is not. Oh, the Encore. Oh, <laughs> let's finally get the Encore working. Encoring him into Tail Glow. <laughs> You're done, Zo. Goodbye. And there's a switch out to Screen Tail. Which just eats up that that freeze dry. I can see Aaron being scared away from from setting up screens there though, given the presence of Brick Break on Gliscor. Yeah, for sure. Iron Bundle getting good. I mean, good Aaron's use already used four turns to set up screens, which have just which have just been gotten rid of entirely. Ooh, yeah, Toxaplex eats those. Yeah, Scream Tail opting I for protect. Screen tail here. Which works, oh. help, letting it avoid being poisoned for a turn. Yeah, very, very important protect there from Toxic. Yep, yeah, and now a nice switch into Golden Go. With Air Balloon, which yeah, good as gold. Is also so immune to that. I mean, it's also toxic, a Steel type. Yeah, Steel type kind of. Golden Go does get Nasty put off and does have its Air Balloon, but it gets no, knocked no. off. <laughs> to get just under half health. Oh my goodness! The special oh, defense. It is a shadow ball yeah, with three percent. That all that bolt coming in clutch there for him. Wow. The EVs. That's gotta be heavily invest that's gotta be heavily invested iron treads. But the S is out now. Mm, but it's getting a speed boost. Yep, Protect just gave it a free speed boost. And now it yeah, outspeeds and power getting the kill there. Pretty much restored power and getting another speed Let's boost see, here. Glide score, Latios. Oh Glide score. It's Glide score. Mm -hmm. As Pathro protects to get a third speed boost up. Yeah, he wants that stored power bad. Oh, but it switches out. There's but he switches out to Screen Tail. Very interesting switch there. I feel like he would have done sizable yeah. damage to it. But... I guess he didn't want to get. He, I guess he didn't want to take too much hit on his Just... Pathro yet. Hmm. I guess in Screen Tail using Wish now. Oh, oh the hydro pump. Miss. Let's do that. Oh, that miss is big. The Iron Bundle Gambit. And Bundle lives, but not for long. The wish comes true, and the burn damage will take out Bundle. 
And we are yeah. down to a 3v3 here. Screamtail protects, trying to avoid being poisoned. Ooh, but infestation. It was infestation trap in this time. If infestation worked, that would have went really well for M there, because Screamtail would have been locked in. It would have been trapped. Yeah, I doubt, ca I doubt it's carrying a strong psychic move. Ooh, no man, if Unless he's you like psychic things. Yeah. Trapped and poisoned. Yeah, it's kind of done, though. Ooh, energy ball. Does a good amount. But probably some healing. Yeah, recover. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, yeah, but it, it's a three shot anyway. Yeah, you kind of just spam recover, though, no? Or if it has protect. I don't know if it has protect. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have uh, yeah, yeah, could just stall out. Yeah, Tax could just stall out Manaphy here. Oh yeah, being full bunker. But yeah, that's kind of just all it has to do. Yeah, I mean, I... I guess Eren's main way out of this would have been another Tail Glow and then, and then an Energy Ball, maybe? Yeah, that probably would have yeah. been a smart way of going about it. Oh, the Hypnosis, though. But it's not the Hypnosis! Now that's a surprise, as it's starting to rack up those speed boosts again. M switches out the sleeping toxics for glide score. Oh, that means it has no dazzling gleam though. Yeah, Latios. Yes, it does. Yeah. Kind of just do its thing without the. Ooh, the lumber and it's not those lumber has been knocked off. There. Yeah, but yeah. Latios kind of can just wall this thing out without fearing dazzling gleam now. Yes, Pathra gets at the speed yeah, boost. Does yeah. have... He still eats those. Yeah. But it's still a 3 KO. It's still, a, it's still a 3 hit KO with all those boosts. Shadow Ball just barely not getting the KO onto his Pathra. Just gets a speed boost, but that won't really do much here. Latios yeah, will hang Latios on. I'm surprised this Pathra didn't protect here. again. Just to ensure and it'll the flip KO. turn into the sleeping Toxapex. And all Iron has left is the Screamtail. Huh. I really wonder oh, why we didn't see this. Is... Unfortunate. Yeah, it's not going to do much against yeah, this thing. Yeah, the table just does not all do screen much tail. there at all. Yeah, all screen tail has, I guess, is the play rough. If it had a psychic move, it definitely would have yeah. used it at this point. And we are wow. seeing the forfeit, which I mean, let's not talk about that. It will not happen again. Honestly, let's just pretend Aaron got all that. Time. Yeah. Let's just pretend that Aaron got stalled out there. <laughs> yeah, he was he was saving us the the two minutes of watching Infestation and Toxic. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But the real. I, it's against the rules, but. Is... Well, it's let us give me a blessing time. in disguise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we have a very very exciting match here. We have Skeletino and the Skeletor Superstars bringing in Dragapult, Garchomp. Thunder Asterion, Tinkaton, Don Dozo, and Satitan up against Mike Jewel and the Long Island Gastrodons running Walking Wake, the titular Gastrodon, Blood Moon Ursa Luna, Hearth Flame Ogre, Ogre Pond, an Amped Up Toxtricity, and a Charizard. Yeah, as yeah, much from as. From what I've heard, this is a really exciting match, so I'm yeah, really same. amped up to watch this. I'm excited to see how this goes down for sure. Yeah. Yeah, as interesting as Jewel sometimes plays with his Pokemon, he has really scary Pokemon. So no matter how you play it, it's they're always going to be threatening on the field. It, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've had the the memes over Jewel's Gastron in the past, but Gastron is still a very solid Pokemon, especially with Storm Drain. Mm -hmm. Drain, yeah, and then Gastron, Gastron singles is pretty good. Yeah, and then you have things like. Walking Wake, Blood Moon, Ursa Luna, and Hearthflame Ogre Pond, which are just outright terrors just on their own. And on Skeletino's side, though, he's not lacking in firepower either, with two pseudo legendaries in Dragapult and Garchomp. Yeah, let's see how, how this interesting match starts off. <laughs> Ooh, we see Garchomp. We have Garchomp Ogre in Ogre Pond. Oh my goodness, Power Whip does so oh, much. A power Whip? There. No Horn Leech. Power Whip from Ogre Pond, very interesting. 
With a dragon tail, though. Yeah, the lack of horn leech is pretty notable, though. Especially yeah. given, especially given that it had over a third of its health just chipped away by that dragon tail. Hydro Steam is dealing good damage at the Tinkaton, but I'm not sure you really want to keep awake out against Tink. I mean, if it's faster, it kind of just gets the KO. Mm, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, that's a good point. Very physically powerful, with its high yeah. space stats being special defense, not. Yeah, and Hydro Steam just just. Just spamming Hydro Steam is getting good work in having threatened Tinkaton a bunch oh, and taking switch. out Garchomp. He switched! Oh my goodness! Now we're seeing Dragapult against Ursaluna. The second hit of Dragon Darts getting a crit there. And having taken four darts, Ursaluna is taking a oh lot of God. damage. <laughs> the Blood Moon gets a critical hit, but Dragapult is sashed. Yeah, that sash came in so much clutch there. Yeah, Ursula down Luna goes Blood Moon. But Sash is and out comes the snail, though. He, he gets another crit. crit. It is insane. Skeletino getting all the crits here as the Titan comes out to eat the Ice Beam. Yeah, this game has been full of crits so far. Kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah, Ooh, and Snowscape. Snow Ooh, Slash setting Rush? Up, setting up the town snow, yeah. Probably is, is. Yeah. and it, it just beefs up its defenses further too, letting it eat that earth power like we saw there. Ooh, does not want to eat that. Even Charizard spinner. takes over half health from from that ice spinner. So Titan is very powerful as we see it take down Smaug. Yeah, yeah. you kind of just want to stall out these snow snow turns. Uh, I don't know about this. That'd switch. be the ideal, yeah. Ooh, it still tanks that pretty well though. Yeah, it's oh neutral, and it it is packing flamethrower, which is able to take out the titan pretty well and this snow's not really gonna do anything else for skeletino now that was purely yeah. just for the titan surprised we didn't see another switch but the darts yeah dragon darts in so much there yeah dragon Bolt showing why it was a 19 pointer yeah i mean does. it's faster than just like than anything else in this entire draft league mm -hmm. that anything that picked. got drafted it's faster yeah yeah that's what i meant yeah but Gastrodon's tanky and is able to live on and take it out. Do we but see now Grass it's up against Thunderous. Yeah. It's Grass Knot. Zapdos at home continuing to be powerful. After its good performance in week one as well. Ooh, the throat spray. No more. Kurt Cobain's starting to lose his voice a bit. But Shift Gear is... I mean, shift Gear, yeah. I didn't even know yeah. that Toxtricity got that move. <laughs> I don't know what it's shifting, but I mean, go crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know? Sludge Bomb dealt decent damage at least there. Yeah. There, yeah, yeah, Shift Gear Texture City is only on the amped up form, by the way, not on low key. It's huh. weird. Yeah. I don't remember what low key key gets in exchange, but it's not as good. <laughs> mm. Boom Burst. Nice protect into the Boom Burst. Boom I mean, is revealed so far. No electric move, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, Steel does resist electric. So oh yeah, it wouldn't matter. That makes sense. Yeah. But at least it would be. And the problem is, the shift gear was set up, but then he was just using special attacks, not fully being able to take advantage of that. Uh, Ogre Pond three to one. But it is Ogre Pond, so. Yeah, and Fire Ivy Cudgel will just wipe, wipe this off the map. Yeah. So down goes Tank a ton. I mean, Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is a menace. Is it's that faster. Oh, but the Ogre Pond has speeds. Yeah, now it's just Ogre Pond against Don Dozo. Don How much would this Power Whip do? Oh my goodness. Not <laughs> quite enough. Don Bozo is very bulky, and the Waterfall is able to take out Ogre Pond to there give Skeletino the narrow victory. Wow, yeah, if that was Horn Leech, I think we would have had a different result. I think we would have had yeah. a different result if... Uh... Jewel switched out Walking Wake out of Dragapult again like he did the first time. Because Walking Wake kind of just does numbers True. against his team. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, still very close game. And uh, surprising DM from Jewel himself uh, telling me that I will be his first Indeed. victory next week. Uh, we'll <laughs> see, I guess we'll see about yeah. that. We'll see. This is a new Jewel. So but will we'll you see. be able to make... But will you be able to make a read as as well as the one Jamez made in week one? I can't. That's that's just too high of a bar. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I can't yeah. be Jamez. I can't be him. 
But speaking of JMAZ, it, we'll be watching JMAZ versus Yep, you Swamp beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, we have JMAZ's New York Glamets with the Tsuin Samurai, Iron Valiant, Baxcalibur, Chi Yu, Excadrill, and Zapdos. The same lineup we saw JMAZ bring in week one, and the same one we're probably going to see going forward for, for most of the time. Mm -hmm. Up against Swamp Boss's team, Persona Furret. With its with its very own Furret, Alolan Ninetales, Iron Boulder, Yuxi, Roaring Moon, and Leafeon. Yeah, Iron Boulder kind of goes crazy here into this team comp. It, it kind of just mighty cleans yeah. everything. Yeah, I mean, his Hisuian his Samurai, I think, Samurai, does well yeah. into it. Yeah, Hisuian Samurai would kind of be the one thing that could... uh Maybe like Ninetales or Leafeon would, could probably take it out from there. But I guess we'll just see yeah. how each. Yeah, but which of those want to go against? Chi which of those want to go against the Chiyu though? Ooh, yeah, nothing really wants to take the Chiyu. I guess Yuxi yeah, maybe. I mean, but dark type moves. I find this very interesting because Swamp Boss here has ways where he can just roll through JMS, but then JMS also has like just a couple, just some really strong Pokemon that could just counter what he wants to do. Yeah, it's kind of all about positioning for this game. Yeah, definitely. Right, let's see how. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing either Samurott or Excadrill is going to be the lead. Yeah. Yep, there's yeah, the Samurott. Against Yuxi, yeah. yep, Stop both hazard setters. Coming out right away. Scarf for Sash. But that has the unfortunate side effect of. Uh, uh, of giving Samurai the speed boost while locking it into a move he was wanting to use multiple times anyway with Ceaseless Edge already having two layers of spikes out just after the first KO. Yeah. That's giving giving Samurai that scarf could prove really bad for Swamp Boss here. Mm -hmm. Definitely, but Roaring Moon does get a dragon dance up, but before an Iron Valiant, that's not un not good enough. Yeah, come a little in nine tails. Valiant's setting up a calm mind, probably beating the Aurora really Veil that's yeah. coming in. I guess probably realizing he wasn't going to be able to get the KO when Aurora Not Veil was coming mind. in, so may as well really mitigate it. Oh, but the Roar! But the Roar! Oh, but it brings out like you. Like, you. <laughs> that Roar so goes into the thing that Swamp Boss wanted to see less than anything. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it kind of eats that. Is it faster yeah. though? If it's faster, if the it's the Aurora Veil probably. Oh, the Aurora Veil probably saved Boulder a lot there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sword Stance uh -oh. predicting the switch. If it's faster, mm. this thing could be doing numbers. Not Ooh. sure that's exactly where you. It is faster though. Yeah, Iron Boulder has like yeah, 122 really speed. Drill. This thing is incredibly fast. Yeah. Samurai's back out. Yeah, getting all and this, down goes uh, Boulder to Samurai. Three layers of spikes are now on. It does look like Swamp Boss forgot tidy up on Furret. That's kind yeah. of yeah. And Furret and 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 does come out to try to remove the spikes, but just too late. Yeah, that crit from Cecil's eyes really mattered a ton there. Yeah. And look if you can get Sunny Dance. Solar Sunny Blade. Here. Something's eating something. Yeah, remember Samurai is remember Samurai is. Oh my god, the cr the counter crit though. <laughs> Did the crit really matter there though? I mean, I think it might have. It might have. Yeah. And then a T yes, yeah. and Sun. Oh. Oh, the rock could have been yeah. pretty bad. Oh my goodness. Now the rock. Getting rid of the flying weakness. Ah, oh, the hurricane hit. But the hurricane still does enough damage. To Take out Leafeon. Now it's just Nine Tails coming into three layers of spikes. Yeah, three layers of spikes and like four other Pokemon in the back. Yeah, that Volt Switch alone <laughs> took off back. over a quarter of Nine Tails' health. Oh, That's Calibur getting Roar bored not... away. Oh, not really. <laughs> I mean, roaring when you don't have any hazards up on the field. <laughs> uh, interesting decision. Yeah. Samurai's coming back. It wants the last kill. Yeah. JMS beefing up the MVP race, and the Razor Shell does it. There we go, yeah. That is game. Hisuian Samurai just 
just taking full control of the entire game here. Mm. Yeah, scarfing it into the spikes and then not really having a way to remove it after that is kind of problematic when you're switching out so much. Yeah. yeah. Man, still well played on both ends. Those are some <laughs> unfortunate crits for both sides. Jeez. Yeah, you don't you don't like to see it, but it happens. Definitely. And now we have the Indiana Infernapes from Kora Sensei with its mascot Infernape alongside Belly Boat, which is looking very tiny right now, <laughs> along with <laughs> Arcaladon, Galvantula, Scizor, and Donphan. We're seeing all three of the of the elephants today, and up against. Our fav fan favorite metronome team from B Big Guy and the Ludicrous Lugias with Mew, Snorlax, Magmortar, Gardevoir, Therian Thunderous, and S Jeffrey himself, Sableye. Very excited to see what metronome shenanigans come out here today. We've seen all the elephants and we've also seen all the Scyther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we've seen all the genies, though only two of them have been Therian. Mm hmm. Uh, no enamorous. Oh, right, no enamorous, right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> enamorous. I'm surprised you didn't bring an, bring an amorous, honestly. No, I felt like your uh, rubber room would have just kind of wiped the floor with them. Yeah, that was one of the big reasons why I brought it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing we either see uh -huh. Donphan or Galvantula lead here. Then, hmm. Yeah, probably Galvantula. Probably setting up. Like a good and, uh, I don't even know who to expect as the lead for as the lead for, for the ludicrous Lugia's. Maybe Mew, I guess. Yeah, the big Aegis Paper Up has probably has to come out first. Yeah. Yeah. Anything can really happen when you're fighting a big guy. Yep, big <laughs> Aegis Paper Up coming in. The Quick Claw. Quick Claw. Stealth Rock. Oh, and he Quick lives. Claw, stealth rocks, and it lives the bug buzz. Oh, nice switch, nice Swapping switch. out Back for Magmortar now. He's learning type matchups. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I think he found the command in Showdown. Is what he told me the other day. Ah. Oh, he picks up the kill. With the first kill Not on the board. Not going Metronome, but just a straight up flamethrower. He's learning. And Inferno, he beats some rocks. Ooh. Destiny Bond, Destiny Bond, thoughts? Card of War to Pluska. Nah, not here. Inferno's defenses oh. are tanked. Still waiting to see our first metronome. They said it's Moonblast, which Scizor tanks pretty well, but it. And it doesn't really care about that special attack drop. Here comes oh. Pinchy. Oh. Technician Bullet Punch. Unfortunate. Yeah. I yeah. Like, but these switches are Pinchy really the good, Lobster. Uh... Yeah. Oh, the quick claw! Quick claw! Oh. Oh. But the bullet oh. Oh. Scizor is still outspeeding in the priority bracket. And there's the lax. Wario time! <laughs> oh, baby. Something's eating Your a fat earthquake. taking a lot from that U turn there. Earthquake, yeah, well, earthquake. it is life orb, I guess. Yeah. But still. Oh. Earthquake not into something immune to it this time. <laughs> yeah, you kind of. The crit! Oh, the wow. body press. The crit body press. It's too I don't bad. know how much the crit mattered, but. So. But it's Kazuo Mishima comes on the field. The dark has a dark type and gets a will o -wisp onto Ark. Ah, oh, but Draco. Yeah. Oh, but the Draco. Draco. I like the will o -wisp, We though. still have not seen Metronome pressed once yet. It's very interesting, actually. Yeah. Levin, Levin's not using his most powerful Metronome. power. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Oh, powder We're snow. Powder <laughs> snow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Destiny Whopping back out bond. to the celery stick. Destiny bond. Does Parabolic live the parabolic charge. Yeah. We are seeing the Destiny, Destiny bond. bond. No. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> Why? And then the next Destiny Bond fails. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, but the first one did 40 <laughs> falls because it was boosted. Oh, that sucks. Oh, because it, this one didn't have the parabolic charge. Oh. 
Tornadus comes back and hits Dark Pulse, which does charge it with Electromorphosis, but it still survives! Metronome? We're seeing one last Gambit? This could be big! Aww. <laughs> it's Spark. <laughs> Final Gambit? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have saved him! You know, honestly, I think Levin played That wouldn't have even really done well. any damage! <laughs> All things considered, he I think Levin played, played well. He played pretty well, yeah. All things he considered, yeah. He had some yeah. good switch-ins. He had I'm some... Pretty, I'm pretty surprised he's drawing Levin here. He did, yeah. It's just give him props for that. Gun. And the switch-ins, though, were kind of on point. Kind of crazy. Yeah. I think I think this is the rise of a new, a new Levin. A new big Ike fan big guy. I, th I think next week he comes back even stronger. Yeah. A new era is upon us. But yeah. As for overview for this week, these were the scores. Uh, a lot yeah, of these were our matches. A lot of very close matches, and then some of them are just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's the MVP yeah. race, though. We got a new yeah. tie. Yeah, we think. As Path is still up top, but it has been tied by the New York Glimets, Hisuian Samurai, and Daniel's Masquerade is also so still up near the top. We take our top three. Ursary, my beloved, he's <laughs> fallen off. As as for this week's top performers, I'm pretty sure to say Hisuian Samurai's one of them, definitely. Who do you, yeah, who, who do you think is our sure. top performer for this week? I mean, Miascorada and Solomon both picked up three kills, respectively. And then, obviously, Sam Rob Yeah, th four. they put a lot in. Dragapult yeah. was also able to do so, so much with those dragon darts against mm -hmm. Mike Jewel. Yeah, and Marcus's Whimsicott, out. though, with the, the Leech Seed read? Oh my goodness, the Encore? <laughs> went crazy. But yeah, the standings for this week, this is kind of how it is. Daniel in the lead with very good differential on his side. And J-Maz in close second, yeah. and me and Coral Sensei tied for third. Yeah, and... The bottom five seeds with the Long Island Gastrodon, Magikarp Mayhem, Rose Tinted Lenses, Persona Furry, and Ludicrous Lugia is still looking for their first wins, but I'm sure they'll come soon enough. I think based on the play we saw this week, I think it could be coming very soon. Yeah. But yeah, that is going to be all for, for this week, unfortunately. But we have some hopefully very yeah. fun matches for next week. Yeah, what are some of the matches we're looking most forward to in week three here? I, I think M I think I think you versus Hunter Daniel is going to be yeah. a very exciting one. I think M versus Coral Sensei is going to be very interesting. Fun as well. Yeah. Which one? M versus Coral Sensei. Coral Sensei. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like I gotta perform next week with Jewel calling me out as his first win. I don't know. He's making yeah, a lot of bold predictions on. here. But we, we'll see. We'll see. I think... I'm against Galchino. I think Galchino get... as well could also be interesting, Danny. Yeah, I'm still looking for my first win there. Hey, yeah. both of you are. Oh, no, no, no. Galchino won against Jewel. Yeah. But still, it was close. Yeah. Exciting things yeah, coming man, up. Yeah, man, I, 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 so, I have such a tough schedule, man. <laughs> Skeletino 3, Joe 4, Armando 5. I might be 0 and 5. Hopefully. You gotta not. believe. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta start cooking. Alright. Well, it's back to get to the lab and uh, back to start cooking again, but we'll, we're gonna start signing out for this week. Yep. Absolutely. This has been. This has been the Hashi Esports Draft League. We will see you next week. So long.